console is a lovely little station. It's actually right next to the canal, which you can just appreciate is right behind the platform there, the down platform. And the railway in the canal shared a valley. In fact, the first railway that came back through the valley actually occupied part of the canal track bed. Well, canal bed, sorry, not the track bed. Um, down towards uh, Froghall itself. So at this point here, the railway is actually on the banking between the river to the right and the canal to the left. And there's some sluice flows that we discovered over the years with the Waterways Authority that uh, are supposed to govern the water levels between uh, the top there, down at the Black Lion pub, you can just see there in the distance. And also there's another sluice down there that goes under the railway, just under that bridge there, just by our signals. We have a barrow foot crossing that's manned by platform staff for uh, when we have busy days, when we use the two platforms and we open the loop. And we have a foot crossing, uh, open foot crossing up there at the far end uh, by the Black Lion. And that's to get to the pub itself. In the old days, the railway actually delivered uh, beer on that loop line over there and was rolled down barrel wise in and up into the pub. This waiting shelter, which is actually over slung over the canal, you can just see there, as one of the original structures of the North Staffordshire Railway that survived even BR days into preservation. That's been restored. You'll note there's a train arrived plunger just on the far wall of the waiting shelter there and that's for the trains coming in from the Chaddleton end obviously they're out of sight of the signaler so we can't see whether the uh, tail lamps arrived complete or not so the guard has the responsibility of operating the train arrived plunger to inform the signal person that the train has arrived complete with tail lamp. So the first thing we're going to do is to show you how to open the signal box and we're here today testing it under possession. I have the keys for the whole of the line. As you can appreciate this is a passing loop signal box in the middle of the railway. So what we have is our section staffs both sides. So this is our section staff for Leapbrook Junction through to console, this side. And here we have our section staff for Froggall through to console from that side. And they're padlocked together so that they can't be separated until you get to this signal box passing loop in the middle. That ensures that both trains have arrived within the loop before you can separate the staffs, open the signal box, etc. The staff towards the elite brook end is a token key. We have token working between the two boxes. Um, we have no signal machine at the far end at Cheddleton. We have the ground frame key for the run round at Froghall, but because we need a machine here to prove the key here, we've used the Western Region key release instrument, and that's what this key is for, the additional key on there. Um, we did have a small mic switch key switch, with a, which a lot of Heritage Railways used over the last 30, 40 years. Um, the key could only be removed once put back into the normal position, so you could never leave a permanent release up. And it was a unique key, so you only had one key, so no one could copy it. Um, I know in the early days of a lot of heritage railways, they actually used uh, car engine starting keys, because they're exactly the same, they're a unique key, and it can only be removed once you take it back out. So that fulfills some of the purposes of the release circuits on starting signals. And then of course you give the key to the driver, and off he goes, and can't get another effective release on the signal until the key's returned and everything's gone back through the process. Starting signal's returned, key's entered, turn to release, Turn back to normal, remove from the machine, you get your one release for your one signal pull. So what we'll do, we'll go through the signal box, a couple of things to notice here. Um, I'll show you the diagram in a second, make it easier. We have our block switch is our power on off switch, so we'll turn that on. We can see that our track circuits are clear. We have track circuiting over the points and on the approaches. We have uh, track stick relays coming in to prove that the train's actually arrived as well. Um, so the first thing we can do here is check all our indications. Our signal indications and our multi-point indication are permanently shown, even when the power's turned off. Um, so very first thing we're going to do, we know they have the line under possession. We're going to separate the staffs so that we know that we have them here. Now you'll notice that the padlock that holds them together is held by a key, and the key is chained to the block shelf. So you can't get it apart, it's tied to that block shelf there. 
So the only place you can take them apart is here physically. First thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to put this in the instrument, but I'm not going to turn it. And I'm going to put the token key in the token instrument, but again, I'm not going to turn it. I'm going to put my signals back. And as usual, quick check, and you can return the signals to danger for any signaling. 14, 10 or 14 here. A, um, a back lock on it. Now that will have to wait there till the back lock time is timed out, two minutes. And the reason for that is obviously now it's under possession we haven't had the train arrive from Chedleton to drop the track circuit, to pick the track stick relay to operate the circuit so that we can just get that straight back. So we have to wait for that to time out. While that's timing out, I'll just tell you a few things about the frame. The frame is a Mackenzie Holland cam and soldier frame. I'll show you a picture of the actual frame later, a bit closer up. One thing about these frames is they have three off positions. So you can pull the lever to here, here, or here. Um, now that causes problems with your electric locks, so obviously we only use position one. Um, it's quite a big early frame, North Staffordshire design. It uses rotating shafts and rockers, which are clamped on. Later versions of this, you'll have seen in another video we've done, they actually have a, a third bolt through and as one thing we've done is we've marked everything up with white tipex. So if anyone over forces one of the levers and it drops one of the rockers around, we can see which ones move straight away. That was a, one of the design flaws of the early system in that they could come loose if they weren't maintained properly. Um, and obviously in the later design, they had an extra bolt there to stop that from happening. It would have been better if they just had flats on the, on the shafts so that you clamped onto a flat, not a round surface. As I mentioned, all our signals here, we only detect our signals that are far out. So London Road Bridge has a very tall 45 foot signal to the side there. I can just see it's about a quarter of a mile away from me now. The points to my left going towards Kingsland Frog all are mechanical. Uh, the points to my right are motorised with a M3 point machine, uh, which we got from our colleagues at the MZ and Bolton Abbey Railway many years ago, which came previous to that from Manchester Victoria. Um, they were used quite a lot around Manchester Victoria areas. We're trying to keep as much North Staff's equipment in the box as we can. So we have our Mackenzie and Holland uh, Worcester Makers plate on the back there. And we have little things like this McKen uh, North Staffordshire lever collar. So we do try and keep things reasonable. Um, all our signals are illuminated electrically. We can see them from here. Um, and we do have push buttons. And as you'll notice, we've got our back lock. So we can place our signal now fully back into the frame. Now, at this point, two things need to happen. I'm going to engage the Kingsley and Frogwell key to prove that I'm here. And that key has arrived complete and the train is inside the section. I'm going to put the token back in the token machine. And take it back out. Now, there's a reason for that. Putting the token back in the token machine proves that the section is clear. However, we need a key out to release the frame. We need both keys turned here to get the frame out. So we have to do that to get the key back out. Now at this point, we should be able to pick our electric lock on our king lever, our brown and white number eight lever, and put that back. At this point, the box is all working. We can open it up as a normal signal box. Now, we've got a fault on this here. 1040 is not showing a good on indication. We're gonna look into that. But just for the rest of this video now to quickly speed this up, what I'm going to do is I'm showing you closing the signal box. So first thing, with everything back now, we need to get our king lever back out. We have our key here. We've already proved that it is here and it is not in the section. We have our king's lever and frog all staff in the machine. I will pick my king lever, pull that across to the reverse position. And my king lever disengages the opposing lock in between the signals. As you can appreciate, if we're running a train from this direction, we don't want the opposing signals pulled off at the same time. But when we close the signal box, we want to pull all our signals off so we can go both ways on the main through line. So that's what the king lever does. It's a disengaging lever. It disengages the opposing interlocking between the opposing signals. So with that pulled out now, I will pull our signals, which are two, three at the end of the platform going towards Shelton, 14 coming back in, and number 13 going out, and I'll do that in order. So we have economizers on the back of the frame here. So 
two. Quite a heavy pull, number two down on the bridge. Three. So start it towards Shelton off. And then number 13. That's a signal just outside the box here, so that's clear. Number 14 is a long pull. Number 14 is off. Now we've got our signals cleared, got our king lever out. Two things we need to do. Take our Kingsley and Frogwell staff out to our console, uh, to Chelsea staff out. Top machine showing the train is going to because I have withdrawn the staff for that. And finally, check my indications, everything's showing correct and off. Track's showing clear, close the signal box. And that is basically it. But there's one last thing I'm going to do. I've got the staffs together. Because now the signal box is closed. This acts as one section. And that's done. The box can now be closed.